today we're welcome to Collins Creatures. This is a Cuban rock iguana and it comes to us from the courtesy of Clyde Peeling's Reptile Land and I'm currently in his outdoor enclosure. The scientific name of the Cuban rock iguana is Cyclora nubila, which when you translate the Latin and Greek, cyclo means round, ura means tailed, and nubila is Latin for gray. So it literally means round tailed gray lizard. Cuban rock iguanas are from the rocky coasts of Cuba and the islands surrounding Cuba and there is a very large population of over 2,000 living on the Guantanamo Bay U.S. Naval Base. And there is one subspecies that is endemic to the sister islands of Little Cayman and Cayman Brock. A small group was released from a zoo on Isla Maguez, an island south of Puerto Rico, and virtually all of the captive examples come from this feral population. Like most iguanas, they get fairly large, uh, four to five feet from snout to tail tip. And the only other species of iguana in the Cyclora genus that gets larger is the Grand Cayman Iguana. They are very sexually dimorphic with males getting bigger than females. And they are typically dark gray to brick red in coloration with all sorts of colors in between, while females are more olive green. He is, he is more light, but he does have some black, and closer to his underside, he has some reds. Their legs are body colored, and their feet are black in coloration. Both males and females have a dewlap, which is a flap of skin underneath their chin, and typically males have a larger dewlap and their jowls are quite large with spiny tubercles. Their backs have large spines that appear that they would be very rigid, but they're actually quite soft. They also have quite spiny tails. A trait shared with other lizards and lizard lookalikes like the Tuatara, they have a parietal eye, which isn't literally a third eye. It is a photosensory organ on the top of their head that helps in detecting light as well as for thermoregulation. They are a diurnal animal, which means that all of their activities other than sleeping will take place during the day. When nesting, females will often use the old nests of Cuban crocodiles and they will defend these nests very fiercely. Here you can see him bobbing his head. This is not a threat display, this is just him letting us know that we're in his territory. If he was being aggressive, he would most likely hiss, grunt, or show a more threatening stance and possibly whip his tail. They're typically slow moving but can move very fast when they need to and when they are younger and lighter they will also climb up trees. They are also able to swim well for short periods of time. In the wild they eat a variety of plants such as purslane, prickly pear, black mangrove, and hericea. Their large intestine contains a large amount of nematodes, possibly to help digest their high cellulose diet. They will also sometimes eat animal matter, though this isn't very common. To help get rid of some nitrogenous wastes and salt, the Cuban rock iguanas, as well as other kinds of lizards, will spray that waste out of their nose, and you may see them sneezing or a buildup of waste or salt on their nose, this is normal. While they're not the most common, you can find them, so let's talk about their captive care. When properly cared for in captivity, they can live up to 70 years, which is actually fairly common for species of Cyclura. The minimum size for their enclosure should be 10 by 4 feet, though as you can see, the enclosure in is much bigger than that. And while they're not climbers like a green iguana, they do require something to climb up onto and bask. In this enclosure, it is exposed rock. 
their hot spot should be able to reach 120 degrees and should be able to heat their entire body with if you're outside the sun is their light or an array of lights can be used to heat their whole body indoors and uv is necessary to help properly process calcium for feeding them you should give them mostly plants like leafy greens you can give them some meat but you shouldn't give them too much as that can cause kidney damage and in extreme cases renal failure and while water isn't the most important as they live in fairly dry environments and get most of their water from plants like cactus a water dish should still be given When they are young, they can be very nervous around you and may not even eat while you are present. Though as they age, they can become very calm and docile, personable animals. And as you can see, this guy is very calm and a pleasure to be around with. Though you should still be practicing caution as they are large animals that have sharp claws and powerful tails that they can whip you with. So in summary, the Cuban rock iguana is not the most common, though you can find them, and they are very awesome looking animals that are a pleasure to be around. So that is the Cuban rock iguana. I hope you enjoyed my video and learned a lot. I certainly learned a lot while researching for this video. And I'd like to thank Clyde Peeling Zebraland for allowing me to use their Cuban rock iguana and his enclosure for my video. So thanks for watching, subscribe to my channel, like my videos, and I'll see you next time on Collins Creatures.